You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Exodus 27. Hello, welcome to Geekdom of God. I'm your host, Santir, and today I'm going to talk about the third commandment. We tend to think of the third commandment as thou shalt not blaspheme, but there's more to it than that. The traditional King James rendering of Exodus 27, the third commandment, is Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. To understand this better, I think it is helpful to more fully consider the meaning of the phrase in vain, so I looked it up using Bible Hub Strong's reference, which defines the underlying Hebrew word as follows. Strong's Hebrew 7723. 1. Emptiness, vanity, falsehood. 1a. Emptiness, nothingness, vanity. 1b. Emptiness of speech, lying. 1c worthlessness of conduct. From this, we can see that what the third commandment is prohibiting is invoking or otherwise claiming God's name in a meaningless, flippant, careless, or empty way. There are many Bible passages other than the third commandment that demonstrate how important God's name is to him, such as 1 Samuel 12.22. For the sake of his great name, the Lord will not reject his people, because the Lord was pleased to make you his own. Ezekiel 20 also heavily reinforces this concept, notably in verses 9, 14, 22, and 44. Here's verse 9 as an example of these. But for the sake of my name, I brought them out of Egypt. I did it to keep my name from being profane in the eyes of the nations among whom they lived and in whose sight I had revealed myself to the Israelites. Here, God makes it clear that he's keenly aware of what the nations say about him based on what happens to the Israelites, with whom his name is widely associated. Ezekiel 36.22 hammers this point home. Therefore, say to the Israelites, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, It is not for your sake, people of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. The Israelites being deported from their land had a negative impact on God's name. This is at least in part due to the fact that it made it look like God was unable to save them, the nations not realizing that their ability to conquer Israel was due to God punishing his wayward people. So we can see that God takes his name very seriously. However, if you're anything like me, the concept of God's name can be difficult to understand. I have definitely struggled to understand it in the past. Many have attempted to explain the concept of God's name using the idea of reputation. That is, when God talks about how important his name is to him, it is claimed that he's talking about how important his reputation is to him. I definitely think that's a part of it, but I think there's an even better way to understand this concept. I think God's name is analogous to the concept of brand. When I say brand, I'm talking about it in the same sense that a large corporation, such as Sony or Coca-Cola, would use the term. It includes reputation, but it is fuller than that. It includes everything that the company stands for, and in many ways is the company itself. Corporations go to a lot of effort to cultivate their brand, as well as their brand's image. They have employees that do things in the name of their brand. They take on the positive reputation of a brand, and in return, they are expected to represent that brand well. This representational aspect is an important part of the concept of name in the sense in which it is often used in the Bible. For a human example of this from the Bible, consider the tale of Nabal and David's messengers from 1 Samuel 25, 4-13. While David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he sent ten young men and said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. Now I hear that it is sheep shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them, and the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. Ask your own servants, and they will tell you. Therefore, be favorable toward my men, since we come at a festive time. Please, give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this message in David's name. Then they waited. Nabal answered David's servants, Who is this David? Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water, and the meat I have slaughtered for my shearers, and give it to men coming from who knows where? David's men turned around and went back. When they arrived, they reported every word. David said to his men, Each of you, strap on your sword. So they did, and David strapped his on as well. About 400 men went up with David, while 200 stayed with the supplies. Here, we see David incensed when Nabal rejects his messengers. This is because those messengers were sent in David's name and thus represented David. When Nabal snubbed them, it was the same as snubbing David himself. When we understand this, we can see how significant the commandment to not use God's name in vain really is. It's more than commanding people to not use the name of God as a cuss. It critically includes how the people called by his name represent him by their words and deeds. 
We Christians claim the name of Jesus. As such, we represent him. Therefore, we have a duty to do our best to represent him well, to honor God's brand by living according to who God is and what his name means. While I don't have time in this episode to go into detail on all that God's name stands for, here are a few critical aspects of it. Love, mercy, compassion, forgiveness, kindness, holiness, justice, righteousness, and grace. Further, God is a God of action and doing. James reminds us to do what the Bible says in James 1.22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And Jesus tells us that God is continuously at work in John 5.17. In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. Therefore, let us go and actively spread the love and mercy of God through our actions and deeds. Let those of us who claim to represent God do so well. Thank you for listening. Until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this week's Geekdom of God podcast. To support this program, go to patreon.com slash cntier. For more, you can visit geekdomofgod.com. Finally, you can email cntier at cntier at geekdomofgod.com.